Intuit X500 strand fit to keep up with sea kayaks? Well, I've uh, made a video actually before, though that was just a short one, three minutes or so. And I provided a number of examples where I have actually used my Intuit X500 strand fit inflatable kayak together with uh, sea kayaks, both one or two or a couple or slightly larger groups or very large groups like 100 or 115 even sea kayaks. Going into a little bit more in depth of a discussion for this. Uh, I'd like to nuance that a bit or rather provide full information and discuss that a little bit more extensively. I'm actually coming back right now from a safety exercise uh, with a number of kayaks, some of them sea kayaks, uh, which we had ahead of a night swim event that's gonna take place in a few days. And uh, what I mean to say is basically that can you use the Intuit X500 with sea kayaks? Well, I do it all the time, all right? I do it frequently. In fact, these days, because many of my friends have sea kayaks, I actually use the X500 probably more together with sea kayaks than I do inflatable kayaks. But the question is, is it fast enough? Uh, aren't the sea kayaks faster? Isn't it difficult? Am I not paddling at crazy speed, etc, etc. And I thought I'd discuss this, because I know this is a topic that interests many paddlers. And uh, I've received a lot of comments on this, and actually, the short video I made about uh, sea kayaks and the Twin X500 is actually my most watched long-form video at this moment. So, looking into this, I think it's fair to say that I have some experience with this simply because I have paddled so many times with sea kayaks. So I have the frame of reference and uh, I can share the, the good and the bad, so to speak, the differences and what realistically one can expect. So, first of all, is it possible to paddle together with sea kayaks with the Twin X500? Is it fast enough? Well, obviously it's, the answer is yes, because I do it all the time. Uh, but it, that doesn't mean that it works every time, or that it works with every kind of sea kayak, or that it works for any kayaker. So I would like to discuss this a bit, because there are a lot of questions, and a lot of comments, and a lot of thoughts on this. The first thing I would say is, paddling and your paddling speed doesn't depend only on the kayak, obviously. It depends on uh, the kayak, the conditions you're paddling in, and the kayaker. The kayaker's speed and, and uh, ability and technique, their endurance, and uh, their knowledge of the kayak that they're in. So I would say that in uh, many scenarios, uh, it is absolutely possible to paddle at uh, the pace that you would wish, so to speak, uh, to have wet sea kayaks and the Intimate X500. Because when you talk about average paddling speed, you know, normal paddling speed, for longer trips anyway, many sea kayakers even, for a day trip, might talk about five kilometers per hour, or maybe if you're going a bit faster, six kilometers per hour. And starting there, well, five or six kilometers per hour is no problem for the Intuit X500. You can go a lot faster with it than that. But it's, I mean, it's it's also true that I have friends who are sea kayakers some who have much faster kayaks than myself and uh, with some of them, I mean, if they're paddling at speed, I just can't keep up with my kayak because simply the Intuit X500 is 3.8 meters. 
it's shorter, it's wider, it's not as optimally shaped. So in the first place, if you have a sea kayak right here and you have data with X500, sure, you do need to work a bit more with the data with X500 because it will glide through the water uh, less efficiently than the sea kayak in almost every case. Then after that though, it depends on the paddlers basically whether that is a problem or not. Because I have heard from quite a few sea kayakers that I normally keep faster pace than they do. And that probably means that I have better kayaking strength or stamina or technique uh, in some cases. I, or I mean, I paddle a lot, so I'm used to working hard and uh, in, in that case it works nicely. But again, if you have a paddler who's equally strong as me and equally motivated, meaning inclined to paddle quickly or put in a lot of strength and they're in a sea kayak and they're putting in the same energy as I do, obviously they're gonna pull away and they're gonna paddle much faster and longer than I do. Uh, it's that that means that it varies depending on, on who the paddler is but can you put up a, a reasonable speed enough that sea kayaks will be able to paddle along with you and have a good excursion for example sure i mean i've done it so many times and i've been in uh, many situations where you have large groups of kayaks and they're basically paddling at their own speed they're not minding me at all because i'm part of a group of say 100 kayaks in that case uh, i have I've had no trouble uh, in some groups but i've also been easily outrun by sea kayaks when you have a fast sea kayak so it depends as well on what kind of sea kayak you're talking about obviously if you're talking about a sea kayak that is rather heavy and wide and plastic it might not be that fast and it might actually be that it might be somewhat more efficient than my kayak but not much or it might be tiring after a while for the paddler in the sea kayak of, of that sort to paddle so i mean i've had a situation where i've paddled 40 kilometers or whatever uh, with other sea kayakers I've been in data with X500, they've been in sea kayaks that are definitely faster, but I've been the one with the most energy left at the end of the day. Uh, so it's possible, I mean, to use the X500 in a realistic setting with sea kayaks. And I mean, uh, that, that's something to take into consideration. However, if we're talking about the fast glass fiber kayak, uh, a sea kayak that's really made for speed. I mean, I've been with my friend paddling when he purchases his new kayak, and that kayak will pull away from me in my Etowit X500, but it will also be faster than me, a lot faster, if I borrow his old plastic sea kayak. So, I mean, you can't reasonably expect uh, to compare, I would say, the Ituit X500 uh, and expect it to be at the same speed and capacity as a quality sea kayak in, say, glass fiber that's really made for speed. Uh, I mean, obviously, that one is a monster machine many times when it comes to speed and it's really efficient in the waves. And, and if you have two equally powerful paddlers, it's just not gonna be realistic to suppose that they do it X500 can come close because there are there's obviously a limitation for each kayak when it comes to speed. So my point is that the X500 is as fast as any C kayak. That would be ridiculous. I mean, you have these kayaks that weigh. Sorry, that cost maybe three times more than this kayak does. Obviously, you're paying for capacity. So you can have many sea kayaks, a 
and even worse, surf skis that will be immensely much faster than this. But then again, they're faster than many or most plastic sea kayaks as well. So it's simply not a comparison that's particularly fair because, you know, you're comparing completely different classes. So I would say, does, is the uh, Iterweight X500 comparable to a sea kayak? Well, in many respects, I would say that it is because it's a closed kayak uh, that supports a spray skirt, uh, meaning you can paddle in uh, significant waves and uh, be splashed over and that will work reasonably. Uh, it basically it does, uh, I mean it looks kind of like a sea cat, but it's much shorter again and it's wide and it's not quite a sea kayak as such. However, I've used it for sea kayaking, I mean a lot. I've used it together with sea kayaks uh, on longer expeditions, two days, four days, up to 80 kilometers. And uh, I've used it in those kind of settings and realized that some paddlers with fiberglass kayaks or similar are much faster than me and could outrun me anytime if they wanted to. But I've also not been the slowest paddler when it comes to groups of sea kayaks. So sea kayaks in uh, plastic, sometimes I'm slowing down on long trips to accommodate that paddler. Because simply I paddle a lot and I have the kayaking stamina perhaps. And uh, I might not be the typical paddler, but I'm also not uh, you know, a mega athlete of any kind when it comes to kayaking. I mean, it's, I'm a reasonably strong and experienced paddler, but it, it, it by no means any extravagance there. It's uh, simply, what I'm saying is, can you use the Itiwit X500 as you would a sea kayak? Well, you can in many ways. It will not track as well through the waves if you're getting side waves and side wind and such as a sea kayak would and it will not cut through the waves as efficiently. But there is a lot of... Uh, but there are a lot of things you can still do with this kayak in a sea kayak setting. So I would say... The, I would say that... Well, is it comparable to sea kayaks? Well, I mean, if you're looking for the easiest possible experience and you want the least resistance and get as far as you can with minimal effort, then a sea kayak will be more efficient for you. Obviously, what the X500 offers is like any inflatable kayak, you can pack it down in its bag and it's portable and you can store it easily. So those are the advantages. You can bring it wherever you want and get back up on land somewhere else pack it down, get back by public transport even. That's the difference. That's the sacrifice that you make. You don't have the same speed exactly, uh, or the same, it, it, at least it's not as easy to drive forward. You have to work more. But it's not like I have a crazy cadence or anything. Uh, many times people react to my videos and they note that I have this enormously high cadence, they say, by comparison when I compare to sea kayaks. Well, I think that's more, in that video, I might not have thought about the cadence when I showed it left. It's, uh, yeah, it's something else. Uh, when I, for example, selected clips for the short video there, I didn't really consider the cadence as such. And obviously, I mean, here you can see me using the same cadence as sea kayaks and moving forward at the same speed anyway. It's also about how much strength you put in the paddle stroke, how efficient your paddle stroke is, and uh, how you're using leg drive and such and such. So it's not just about the cadence, I mean how fast your paddle strokes are. But obviously, uh, you're going to need to extend more energy in the X500 than a sea kayak. If you're looking for exercise, I mean, if you, if anyway you're out there and you're exercising, I don't think that would bother me that much because I'm still getting a reasonable speed. I can get this 
comfortably up to five or six kilometers an hour with a bit more effort seven kilometers an hour maybe pushing eight uh, and i mean that's what i would do in many sea kayaks as well so uh, i might have to work a bit harder for it but for me with my paddling style that's no problem whatsoever however again if you're paddling with fast super fast sea kayaks yeah yeah i mean that, that's gonna be an issue if you have super fast motivated paddlers that really want to go as fast as reasonably possible they're going to have an advantage but you know i've been again on expeditions where i thought that the uh intuit x500 just wouldn't be compatible where i when i started out with expedition paddling or longer route paddles and every time i get surprised that actually it works so i like this kayak as you can tell and uh I'm trying to be realistic. You have to work more than you would in most sea kayaks. And, but it is comparable to a sea kayak performing in the water, I would say, in many respects, with limitations. It will bounce more. It will not have the same ability to get through the waves. You have to work more, etc., etc. But, I mean, it's it's something that you can use together with sea kayaks. You can safely say that. And I mean, there are so many examples for anyone following my channel. You see me doing that all the time. And it's not like sometimes I really have to work hard, but most of the time, it, it you know, it's it's not an absurd amount of energy that I need to put into my paddling. So uh, those are some of my thoughts on the X500 versus sea kayaks. Obviously, the difference is that you can use this in a back with a you can carry it around in a backpack, whereas your sea kayak you need to get up on a roof of a car. And uh, many sea kayaks are heavier than this one, and obviously you need the storage. So it's kind of uh, a limitation that you have both ways. I mean sea kayaks have limitations or you have to adapt the X500 has limitations and you need to adapt. So whether it works for you that depends on your priorities and your paddling style. Uh, so I think I came from slower kayaks and uh, slower inflatable kayaks and they are you know the X500 was such a step up from that. I mean it was so much faster uh, but someone who's used to really fast sea kayaks or surf skis or whatever and then steps down to the X500 so to speak they might feel that it's a bit sluggish in the water by comparison that's completely appropriate they would probably feel the same about uh, plastic slower hard shell sea kayak so those are my thoughts and I hope that's helpful yeah I think that's it GoPro stop recording